Welcome back to the Isabel Wellman podcast, everyone, the place you come to feel safe to look inward, learn how to integrate your own version of body, mind, and soul alignment, and to optimize your ripple effect in your corner of the world. Today, we have another beloved guest. I'm just overwhelmed with the amplitude of love that's been coming into the podcast with my guests, especially the sisters that I was able to connect with deeper in Crete, Greece, this past, what, October, November now? It seems like it was yesterday still, but holy moly. Today, we'll be hearing from Lizette Morales, a dear sister and humanitarian speaker. She is here today to share about the process of transformation and rebirth. With an emphasis on simplicity of going through every possible lesson and what it means to embody and surrender along the way. By embodying your power and who you truly are, by stepping into your purpose, you are in service to yourself and the collective in the most potent way. So without further ado, Liz, I'd love to hear what does it mean for you to impact your corner of the world? Oh, first of all, thank you so much. That was <laughs> such a beautiful introduction. I'm like so, so grateful to be here with you. Just like the energy, really, like the magical. I can sense it. I can embody it. I can feel it with all my heart. And it's and also very humbling, you know, to connect from different parts of the world and, and then just connect somewhere totally different <laughs> and then just be friends. And I remember that promise that we did, right? Like meeting again. So that's so beautiful and I'm so happy to be here. Um, and really excited, Isabel. Uh, your work is something that I truly admire. And so let's dive into this. Let's dive into what, um, how it works and all that. So let's get into it. And what does, it, can you repeat the question? What does it mean to impact? Yeah, impact your corner of the world. Yeah. My corner of the world. I strongly resonate with simply finding your personal truth. What is that core inside of you? What is your flame? What lights you up in life? What really brings you that true joy that it's our birthright? And how are we using our gifts, our nature, who we truly are, and share it into the world? Just by by knowing ourselves, by knowing who we are, by knowing what we like and remembering, right? Remembering our mission that we came here with a purpose. And if you if you feel like you came here with a purpose, which you normally feel like, mm -hmm. and then you just light it up. And then it's like the beautiful flame that lights up. And then you just can't unlight it. You just have to go and share with other candles and 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 light more and more candles and i feel like that's just such a beautiful uh a mission of mine that i have awakened just being who i am like who is liz and just that question like who are you like are you your thoughts are you your emotion mm -hmm. or oh, and this is something that i've been really learning that has to do with the power of transformation and it's acknowledging that you are none of that like you are not your thoughts you're not your emotions you're the infinite presence behind that allows you to be anything anything mm -hmm. that your being wants to explore and experience is valid and is allowed for you to explore and so I think it's all tied up together just like being who you are but beyond all the expectations of what we've been told we are it's like who you are a despite everything you've been told what you what do you are <laughs> so, yeah. yes the core your inner core that inner fire I love how you mentioned that and the lighting of the candle I think that's a really strong analogy because I feel like there's so many people who let the light go out what would you have to say for for someone who's like I want to and I and I and I desire to learn but I'm afraid or I'm scared or there's a limitation Ooh, well, wow, that's a great question. And I feel like that's something that I've been working through as well, because you feel like, right, like this calling is like, I want to explode. I want to share who I am with the world. And then there's like, uh oh, but like the real world. <laughs> and 
I feel like what it goes down to is to realize that it's all a projection of your own mind. Mm. Like the world out there is literally, what do you want the world out there to be? And all the limitations that you have is just your own projection, your own limitations that are inside of you. And so by shifting that and by just reminding that you have a place in here and that it's it's for you it's there for you to explore and if you're feeling the call it's it's like a future aspect of you that it's calling you forward to experience that like it's it's already happened it's it, even if it's on a vibrational level it already exists and so it's kind of like you calling you forward in that essence and th that's the process the process is going through that navigating the 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 struggle and realizing that it was not that hard along the way although it was when you were going through it but then when you get there it's like damn like I was able to push through it I was able to to feel myself guided through it mm -hmm. and I think it's just about doing it right like it's just about doing it over and over again when you realize how's that how has that looked for you in your life I feel like you also have been putting yourself out there right and how does that um journey has been for you mm. oh turn it on me I feel like that's that so this I knew this conversation was gonna be good and just ah, uh, we're gonna get into the essence of it and it's funny that I mean y'all we've rescheduled this podcast twice and we'll get into that but I think and believe and trust that everything's divine timing and I knew that it was like, okay, yes, we'll, we'll wait. And then last week I needed to reschedule and today was the perfect meeting point. And over the last three weeks, since we transitioned from Aquarius season to Pisces season, happy belated birthday to Liz. She's a little Aquarius son. And I've been going through this. Well, since, since, since leaving Greece, I've just turned off and I was like, I need to just sit and get quiet and do less. And the more I do less, the more that is in alignment with my higher desires comes through. And that's been the, I've been so upset about it because it's too easy. And you know that, that it's the rewiring of it has to be hard. It has to feel like you're working towards it. It has to feel like you're hiking up the mountain and then you summit and then you get rewarded. And it's like, no, I'll sit on the couch and then something happens and then it's in alignment. And all I was doing was sitting on the couch. And I'm really upset about just sitting on the fucking couch being the half happening to me. But I'm also thankful because it's teaching me that as someone who has so much fire and so much momentum and so much thirst for, for life and exploring and the fractals of who I am, which is also another layer of the pie. It's like, all right, who who is is the Boam? And like you said, who are you? What is this identity? Well, it actually doesn't matter, but this is a, a place of fun and a place of play. And if you want to play, then you get to pick and choose your character and you get to like deck them out in the fit you want them to wear and the style and the emotional capacity and the responsibility. And I feel like that is where I've been churning the most. The more I say I'm busy, the more I sit in meditation. And so I feel like I'm really reworking it and going backwards. Like the more I'm trying to push, I go change. And I literally say change in my mind. And I rewire the, the feeling I'm feeling in my body. Because I've, I've really been tapping into that physiology G of this like it's not just the mind it's not just the body you have to have that connection or else the manifestation so to say they're always coming they're always going to come but if you're not awake to it or that fire's not there that alignment awareness isn't there it's like oh I don't see it but then you're in it and you're like oh I see it it's right there and so it's been a lot of that journey. And so I'm really excited to hear because I feel like I've I've really been transforming. And thank you for asking me about my own little quest so far. It means a lot to share, um, and, and especially in this space. But I'm really excited to hear how you have tapped in to this initiation process. So just like you said, with the fire being lit, I know that that Greece may have been a place that really lit that and like got you soaring. And I want to hear or have you share more about 
in your in your personal life, like where you're at and the latest event that you initiated and you shared with a group of people in person recently, your workshops. Okay. <laughs> well, just a lot to unpack. A lot to like, wow. Just do you sharing and sharing your journey. It's like, wow. Uh, I first want to talk about like you were saying like sitting in the couch and like a lot of the times we try to push right it's like we try to make everything work on the physical on the external not realizing that the power is always within right like you can't control anything outside of you but you can certainly control like how how do I feel around everything outside me and I feel like this is something that it's, it's a constant listen because of course you always experience the external and then it's like, oh my God. And then it unbalances you and then it helps you regain, rebalance, recenter. And yeah, that's just how it is. Um, but yeah, I feel like I'm also going through that same process, especially lately. It's been like, I just need to sit <laughs> and I'm very impulsive. I'm a very impulsive person. And I feel like sometimes I just, I just gotta do it. And so, for example, after Grease, uh, I feel like that's how inspiration comes to me and how transformation comes to me. One day I'll just be like, this is what I have to do. Mm -hmm. And and it just happens. I just sit and for example, with the workshop, with uh, being with people, I've been praying so hard to be in service. Like, and and you saw it. Like, I, I feel like it's something, a theme that I shared when we were together. It's like, I just want to be in service, universe, please. Mm -hmm. And it was very humbling because it was like, are you ready, right? Like, are you really ready to hold space for people? And I realized that it's 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 intense. It's intense to hold space for people, especially in deep uh, transformative events. Like we, um, it was embody your inner goddess, right? So it was about uh, women and women women wanting to feel that essence that power that wisdom and leave behind whatever was not serving them mm -hmm. and just maybe feeling uh, a little bit like oh I don't know like I want to step into that but I'm a little bit scared but I really want to and so it's like you know like this is the time and especially through the fire like working with the fire like the fire the anger like I'm pissed off about everything that I no longer want in my life that was so a transformative for me and we did a very powerful exercise where we kind of like we're working through the elements mm -hmm. and we're on, the, on the fire and I had this vision and it was like, okay, like imagine your fears in front of you and I want you to roar them. So we were also working with Sekhmet, this like Egyptian goddess as well, the transformation. And she's like that. She's like, roar to your fears, roar to them and feel the power and the strength that comes from being like, I see you fear, I fucking see you, but I'm not going to stop, mm -hmm. right? And so it's like, rawr, and it was so powerful, so transformative for, for people to, like, go through that and be like, damn, like, I can roar, right? Like, I can step up, and I feel like that's something in my essence. It's like that, like, ah, oh, that power sometimes is a little bit, well, we say a little bit too much, right? But it's not. Mm -hmm. It's like what we need, and a lot of the times that uh, what came at that moment was like, how do you roar to the shit that you don't want in your life anymore, right? Like, how do you roar to, uh, like, war? How do you roar to the things that you deeply don't resonate with? And it and we understand that it's necessary, right? Like, it, and it's all happening in divine time and time in alignment. But also re reclaiming our, our power, reclaiming our power as a collective and I feel like that's a, a strong theme for me in my life is like, how do you, how do I embody my power and what does being in my power or how does that look like in my life? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's, sometimes I let myself go and it's like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> but at the time, it's like, yeah, I take control. I'm driving. And so it's, it's kind of like the balance between both. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. What do you think? <sighs> Oh my God. I fucking love you, Liz. Your fucking energy lights me up from the inside out. And I'm just like front row popcorn and face. I'm watching whatever sports happening. Cause you are just the, that's the sport is there. 
Oh, is it air? You're lighting the fire. <laughs> yes, you're lighting everyone up, and that is your gift. Something I I want to share. I'm just feeling called to share this in this moment. Is Liz is one of the bravest people I know, and she does it in a way that is so calm. For all the fire and all the excitement, you can take those heated situations I saw in person myself. You take the heated situations and you come to them with compassion and love and you reiterate this unconditional empathy and love and hey, we're human and hey, we're just trying to understand and hey, maybe if you hear my side, I hear your side. We don't have to agree, but maybe we can find that common ground. And so this was a story. We were all we're all in Crete and we were at this one sacred site. And we had this really beautiful moment. So all the people there were sisters plus Zen. Shout out Zen for holding down the masculine. And he should write a song called that, holding down the masculine. Anyways, uh, we were, we had this walkway and to a staircase and it was such a beautiful area, beautiful day, really great energy. And we were like, we can walk down this into our sisterhood, into this this new life, this new way of being. And there were some guards there or people just watching to make sure you're not doing any crazy witchcraft, I guess, or some magic. And the first sister walked and then the second was going and they yelled and they were mad at us. And they were just like, what are you doing? You can't walk and mock this ancient site. And we're just there's a group of us and we're all talking well should we stop oh let's just walk away oh but let's just keep doing it but we don't want to disrespect and how do we get into this and Liz just decided to walk towards them and we're all just watching her walk towards them like what's gonna happen and she just sweetly asked them I'm you can say what you said but from where we were it was just you communicating in a non-aggressive way in a very loving, like, hey, we just want to, we just want to understand where you're at. This is what we're doing. And I'd love for you to share your experience stepping up into that moment and taking action. Because I think this really ties in what you've been saying and like such a practical little example. Yeah. You know what? That's crazy. I just realized this is, thank you for sharing, by the way. Thank you for sharing. That's such a lovely, I, it, it sometimes slips out and it's so refreshing. You know, sometimes you get so used to your essence, who you are and you see, right? Like you see the totality of you, you see your faults, your mistakes and your light. And so when people check you on, see that reflection, it's like, damn, you know, like, that's beautiful. Thank you for that reminder. I've been so focused lately on the darkness within me. It's just been coming up so strongly. And it's so refreshing to be like, you know what? Yeah, I'm also that. I'm all, <laughs> I can also be that way. And coming back to the question, it was like, I was just confused. Like I just generally, I, was, I, I could not put myself like I normally don't do assumptions because mm-hmm. I feel like from everyone's perspective is just very different. And so when they told us, uh, you can't do that, I was like, wait, but like what we can't do, I I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. And so I just genuinely wanted to ask like, hey, like what's wrong? I don't understand. And so I remember it was just the, the energy, it was just so calming, so loving that I was not angry. And I was just like, yeah, I just want to understand. And it was my turn, right? So I wanted not to ignore them. I wanted to be like, you know, a peaceful, lovely walk. And so I went to them and I told them like, hey, I just didn't understand what's wrong. And then he's like, yeah, I we just want you to be respectful of the place. And I was like, oh, you know what? This is actually very respectful. We're we're just walking and we're kind of like discussing about what we're the exercise we were doing like leaving behind and just what are you walking you towards uh what are you walking towards in your life and he was like oh okay okay and I feel like I was just with an eye of like I see you brother like don't worry I'm Mm -hmm. I'm gonna respect this place because it's what he wanted and he saw that and was like, you know what? Yeah, I saw that now that you talk to me and, and let me know, I understand. Just don't do any like, you know, faces and all that. And I was like, sure, I got you. <laughs> and, 
and yeah and I remember that was so inspiring for everyone I was like wow like it was it was shocking to me to see how everyone was inspired and I was like damn I didn't realize what I just did right like it was just something that just came out in and it's about trying that understanding and it ties with a theme that I've been exploring in my life which is like evil and and sometimes I think people don't realize that the root of evil is just unconsciousness we don't realize that we are evil and that's and that's it we're just unconscious of it the moment you realize you're doing something that it's like not right you can't preserve that self-image. You have to change. It's like a rule. And I've recently explored it in my life. And it's like, damn, I was evil in this way. And I just was, I, I was generally unconscious of it. And I feel like that's kind of like what happens in the world. People just don't realize in a way, like how they're impacting others mm -hmm. and how what they're doing is having a larger picture. And I feel like that's just uh, it's just about expanding our consciousness. It's just about, you know, like opening ourselves to different uh, ourselves to different perspectives. And how can we can we see that so that we can collaborate with each other? Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is a very humanitarian aspect within. It's like we are all dark as well. We're we're like love and light, but we're also a darkness in a way. And so how do we collaborate with our darkness and how do we use our light as well? And and how do we find that balance? Yes. Oh, that darkness. I want to hear more about your own experience with this, this rising of Sekhmet and this goddess of, I mean, is you probably know a little bit more than me, but so I'll let you describe, but what is her essence and how are you embodying her and what is it allowing you to unfold in your own path? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> Take a take a drink of water, everybody. Take a new red. Well, uh, Sekhmet was this goddess that was like both in the positive polarity, this like goddess of uh, protection, and she mm -hmm. would protect the pharaohs from enemies. Uh, but then on the dark side, she would also be like the the goddess of uh, pest pestilences like rats and, and all that mm. the plague the plague god goddess mm. she is a representation of the fire and the transformation and the alchemization of this processes within and so she represents that transformation within which is the topic that we we're discussing previously which is hilarious um uh, so the way segment just came into my life was just through i was i was working in my workshop and i and I just wanted to learn a little bit more about a goddess because I've been working with the goddess archetype just in general, right? Like I'm a goddess and I embody the goddess essence and I wanted to work with a goddess. And so she came through through an image and I was like, mm, Sekhmet, like she, I've heard of her, but never fully um, embodied her or, or worked with her directly. And so Paulina, um, recommended a book on the group and I was like okay I'll get it mm -hmm. and so it talks and explains more about her and how she transforms so the way you work with her is you become aware of that what plagues you mm -hmm. of the fears of the doubt of everything that is no longer serving you and it's really funny because I had worked with her consciously in a way for the workshop and I was like offering so you basically kind of like bring it onto consciousness and then you do an offering to her so that she eats that out and transforms it into her belly into the womb that sacred center which is transformation rebirth and so well so I did that but then right after the workshop something something happened in my life and then it I brought into consciousness more and more of my life all the painful, all the doubt, all the insecurities, everything in my life. Well, maybe not everything, but just a big aspect. All of the all this darkness that was deep and coded have its patterns. And so sometimes that can be very overwhelming, right? Like you have to be strong to hold that. And so it's like that balance between the masculine and the feminine. Mm -hmm. So how I see it is like the, the masculine is that is this witness, right? And then the feminine is this like unraveling of whatever needs to be unraveled. And so sometimes it looks chaotic, 
so chaotic, right? Like when we bring into the unconscious that which we maybe don't really want, but it's part of us. Mm -hmm. And so just coming with that and being like, okay, I see it. And it doesn't look like, okay, I'm just going to work with that. It looks like, what's happening? <laughs> I don't know what this is. And so just working with that, working with the emotions, working with the like the logic behind trying to work with it and integrate it into our being and finding peace and letting it go as well. Just I feel like that's that's the hardest part. Just well, it's the hardest and the easiest, right? Like once you really want to let it go, you let it go. But sometimes we're attached, right? Like sometimes we don't want to let it go because mm -hmm. it's comfortable. It's what we know, and so. How does it look, the unknown? How does it look, the, the Isabel or the Liz or, or myself, which is not attached to all my trauma and all my limiting beliefs and patterns? And so that has been the invitation in my life, just a transformation. And oh man, I know this is a lot, but this is it, right? Like it's a lot, like it's a lot. <laughs> and so how, uh, how has that looked into your life? Like, how does that, um, maybe have you experienced something similar where you mm -hmm. rise into consciousness and then you're like, okay, <laughs> what do I do with this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, one of the most, I think the first time this ever happened in my life, it was before I had I mean, this was 2019 and a lot of things had happened. And I've talked about it like a, a few times, but never in this way to state like, yeah, this was a really conscious wake up call. So first time leaving a relationship kind of similar to what we were sharing beforehand with, with yourself, like the intuition, like you have to leave and you don't want to leave, but you have to leave, but you got to leave. But why do I have to leave? And you just have to make the choice no matter how hard or crippling it, it will be because you know that the path that you were walking with this other person just is you're about to go into quicksand. And if you walk into the quicksand, you're done. You're going down. And it's going to take a long time for anyone to get you out of that quicksand. And so I was like, well, no, neither of us need to do that. So we can go around and then the paths are just going to keep walking away from each other. But it wasn't that easy as I thought it would be. And my pattern was also a codependent pattern where growing up hyper independent, but really needy to like that male figure, um, like fantastic parents. We won't unpack all this today, but many issues in the family. And my thing was needing that person, needing, putting my responsibilities on them, looking to them to figure out the plan. And I was just going to follow along and frolic and enjoy life and let things happen. But my lesson in life has been standing up for myself and even present day that's my most important thing is to stand up for my alignment because knowing your alignment and actually living in your alignment are two separate things and so for the last like 2019 I broke up with last partner and then I started the cycle of messing around with someone else at a new job and like dating them quote unquote but not admitting I was dating them and like not seeing how fucked up that was just like the manipulation, the the abandonment, like all the wounds I was feeling, I was projecting unconsciously onto this other person while trying to really like sever the head of this other relationship that I wasn't drawing the line of the sand like permanently in. The water would just keep coming and then like the line would be gone. I'd be like, fuck, I gotta draw it again. But then something would happen in between the time of the water and the time of me drawing the line. So that happened for like six months and then 2020 came and I was like, everything's going to shit. I'm going to listen to myself. I'm going to heal. I found astrology. I went to like this online conscious relationship thing and I figured out that it was me, the common denominator of the problem. <laughs> and so... I was like, yes, that is me. I am the common de de denominator of the problem. And I'm going to just acknowledge this. And that was the real start of like learning responsibility as odd as it sounds. And then I moved away from that place, started fresh, severed everything, 
And that was like, whoa, you're not doing that ever again. Your next relationship, like hold off. You don't need someone. Learn who you are. Learn who Isabel is in this era. And that has changed many times since. But it was really impactful. And I think just like taking responsibility for your life, if you're used to being around victimhood mentality or you're not sure what it it looks like to be a strong woman or have that represented to to you or like a strong feminine figure who isn't going to try to be diabolic or anything of the sorts. And yeah, like really pure loving energy. And so there's been a lot of waves, but it's been really like, whoa, you're in control. Hey, you get to create it. Hey, we're changing. Like I said earlier, where I say like change when I go back into that old self, but I want to stay in the new self. It's a meditation practice for me. Like I have to actually sit. I'm always moving. So sitting is good for me to just focus. And it's feeling myself encompassed in water that is safe, creative, flowing. And I have total control, but not controlling in the sense that I'm projecting that so it's been a lot of letting go of lack of scarcity of control of manipulation of jealousy of wanting what someone else has but not taking it upon myself to be responsible responding to what is possible and making it my own and so it's like oh we're we're connecting this this is really fun this is great this is this is going to work for us. And so that's been the really big uh, earthquake. That was the wake up call. And that's my little experience. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Like that taking a responsibility, right. And then standing up for what you truly believe and who you truly are. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we, we hear these truths from outside and then it's like, Oh wait, but this could be true, but this could be true, but this could be true. But then what is really the truth? What is my truth? Mm-hmm. Oh, and I get chills because I've been, right? Like just how, how do I figure what my truth is in the first place? Like, is it my thoughts? Can I feel it in my, can I feel it in my body? And it just like what you were saying, this combination between your thoughts, your, your, your emotion, and then that deeper inner higher self that it's, that it's there, that you just, you just know. And sometimes you don't know, but you know. No, you really like you don't know, but you everything just works out in a way that you realize you knew, but you didn't know you knew. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> oh, so thank you for asking. When you were in your own experience and as you've been working with this energy. Do you have a practice that you fall back on or that has been really fruitful for you to harness this and maintain that energy and maybe even talk about what it means to manifest in the sense of in the moment, but long term? I feel like you have a you would have a really great way to put this. Ooh, okay. Well, this is a practice that I've been doing for a while now, and I actually do angel meditations. So I really strongly resonate with just the energy of being with angels and literally just channeling their energy. And and it's almost in a way to ask for support. I'm kind of like a person, like very strong, like, like I don't ask for help in a way. Like I'm trying to move away from that, but it's like, yes, like I got this. I can go through this no matter what happens. Like I'm going to stand up and then, it's a way of, or in a representation for me to say, you know what, I can also ask for help, angels, <laughs> help that is available for me at all times, please <laughs> help me. And so it's been a really nice way. And it's always like, I can feel it so much. I, I just watch like video meditations with them. And it's really helpful. And lately, just realizing that truth is that what you're experiencing in the present moment. Mm -hmm. like that was just mind-blowing to realize it's like truth is not my fantasies and although yes they exist within me and I see the truth that they exist in my mind like truth 
is that which is being experienced in the present moment and, and not anything else. And so whatever I am experiencing in the present moment is exactly what my soul needs to experience for its evolution. And sometimes we reject that so much, right? Like it's like, I don't want to be here at all. I want to escape. I want to run away. And we don't realize that it's all we have, all the future and all the illusions outside, out there. It's an illusion. It's not truth. It's not it's not real in a way, it's just a fantasy. And sometimes those fantasies cause us problems because we want to be there and we don't want to be here. And so I think that's that's a key long term is like, how can I have the peace and the enjoyment that I'm, I'm looking for in the future? And how can I bring that now? Like, how can I find peace with where I am now? Mm-hmm. And because there's nothing else, right? Like, and, and that's, it's it's been almost like it's almost like can't be that easy but it is that easy right and it's almost like a constant thing that you have to repeat yourself even though a hundred times you repeat yourself press a moment you continuously get out of it it's like it's really funny you get out of it and then it's like okay gotta go back press a moment <laughs> So yeah, I feel like that's that's a key, right? Just like step by step, uh, listen to what your heart has to say at all times, and combine it right with with logic, with the mind, with with being responsible, but also have fun along the way. And it's about the experience. It's about experiencing different things. How about you? What's what's your grounding way? What have you been doing in in that connection with building? It's- I would say it it has been journaling my dreams as well as the meditation. So I've been attempting this half an hour to hour-ish meditation, which is like topping on the cake because it'll set me into that energy. But with this, I've also been doing some coaching with a gal. Shout out, Pleasure Pollinator. And we've been awakening my erotic power it's like the erotic feminine energy the sexual energy that I think is such a catalyst for so many women and if you're afraid of exploring your sexual boundary and going over that boundary and realizing how safe it is for you to do so when you have the caveat being a safe place and feeling safe in your body And when you can work up to that and build that trust with yourself, your power is infinite and it is insane what you can accomplish without having to do, right? Like setting in, elevating your emotions because you're, just like you're saying, the past doesn't exist, the future doesn't exist, it's now. So how are you going to act and respond to what is happening now? And that's your truth. So if you are going to be in traffic and just yell at everybody who can't hear you because they're in your their cars and you're in your car, but you just need to react and yell because you are so consumed by this external world that you can't go in, you're blocked out. Like that's your truth. But eventually maybe you wake up to say, hey, there could be some peace in this moment. I could use this at a med- as a meditation. I could ask myself why I react in traffic. What am I getting out of this? Is this how I want to be? Because the body. So when you are thinking and you have your memories, your memories are always associated with emotions. And whenever that certain memory comes up, the emotion comes up. But then whenever that emotion comes up, that memory will also come up. So the more that you are living in that feeling, the more you are living in the past, which is what blocks everyone who deals with this from moving forward or getting into the manifestation because if you're so consumed by those thoughts feelings memories that you're living in this past body how could you ever expect yourself to create a new future because you're not acting any differently you're not talking any differently you're not thinking any differently or feeling any differently and that's the coherence like you're incoherent in that state you're just like you're just jambled jambled all over the place. Car crashes everywhere. But then when you align yourself and you elevate your emotions and you say, hey, 
this is what I've noticed. I'm controlling, manipulative. I'm jealous. I want to let these go. Universe, I'm going to let them go to you. Universe, I trust you. You have a divine path laid out for me. I feel, when I feel those things, I feel X, Y, and Z. And when I feel that, I feel X, Y, and Z. And I trust you to take care of this and rid me of this fear. And by acknowledging, simply acknowledging these issues we have, I'm talking from first person because this is my experience, but I'm just saying it in like a broader term, terminology, that when you check yourself in that way, then you're you're disassociating from that old past you. And now you can live in the future because now you're thinking, oh, instead, I want to feel X, Y, and Z. And instead, I want that to be because of this. And I want to be able to pause before I react or whatnot. And then you're creating your future. And then because you're aware to the future self and how you want to present yourself and act and integrate and associate, then you can actually do those things. So it's been this really crazy. I feel like I've been in a different world this month, (laughs) but I'm like, I'm over here and then I'm over there and I can see myself. It's like, I'm on a tightrope. And there's the the past and then there's the future. And I'm like, oh yeah, which way am I going to wobble? And can I just stay straight? Or can I keep wobbling and like know which direction I want to go in? So that has been my practice and why I've been practicing it. Long story short. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) I am just absorbing and collecting it letting that sink in (laughs) I like what you mentioned it's almost like I've experienced when there's a situation and almost you can feel like there's a hundred different timelines Mm -hmm. a trillion timelines that can go from every single action that you do Mm -hmm. and sometimes I think we get trapped into believing that oh if I take this road it's gonna take me there right not realizing that there's an infinite intelligence behind everything that no matter what you do you're always in the path of alignment like it's always there and that's the fun part or like there's no messing up like there's this again amazing intelligent amazing infinite intelligence that is always creating and on the larger picture, creating that for us to experience what we truly want, what we truly want to experience. And it's for us to allow it, right? And I I wanted to comment on what you were sharing about connecting with your feminine energy through embodiment and erotism, because that's how I actually connect with my feminine energy. I feel like it's just such a way, like it just puts you in right there right like with the flow and with feeling sensual like the power that comes from feeling sensual the power that comes from feeling like damn like this is so good I feel so sexy in my body so safe and like what does it mean to feel sexy right it's just you feel that desire for you that love towards you that power and maybe that's why it's been in a way just put us something like you shouldn't do because it's so powerful the the power that comes from a woman that knows its power and so again we're we're shaping it and we're we're transforming that but I love that you mentioned that I think it's a great practice for you to connect with your feminine energy and with that essence and I'm probably you right like you with your practice you know and have very profound experiences around that but I wanted to comment I also love to do that and it just puts you in right there and yeah when you when how so I want to ask how long have you been I have so many questions the first one is how long have you incorporated tapping into your sensual sexual desires as a way to have access to your power Ooh, I feel like a year, mm-hmm. a year ago, I actually, Tal, shout out to Tal. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we're doing, when we were, when we were doing the sister course, mm-hmm. she mentioned, uh, so just uh, a friend of ours, she mentioned about looking at yourself naked in the mirror. Mm-hmm. And I was like, damn, I have never done that. 
that seems a little scary. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was going through a breakup. And I was like, you know what, like, why not? Like, why not looking at myself naked in a mirror? Like, for real, why not? And I was just exploring and I was like, wow, like, this is so cool. Like, just looking at me, like, really looking at me. A lot of the times we want to be seen by others, but do you see yourself? Do you acknowledge yourself? Yeah. It was so beautiful to, to like, connect with myself in that way. And uh, throughout the, um, the year, it was more like a practice when I felt like my body was rigid and you get trapped in the doing and then the rigidness and then the corporate world. Um, and so I feel like I had to loosen up. And so dancing, it's a way for me that I kind of like go more with the flow and tune in with that feminine. And so dancing and now dancing sensually and topping with eroticism, that's what has given that. I, you just can feel it. Like there's nothing required, no beliefs, no anything. Your body knows, the wisdom in your body knows right away when you start doing it. How about you? How um uh, how do you decide to explore this journey? Well, I think it was so this was really freakily funny universal align timing alignment. So it was before Crete and I was like, man, I know I'm blocked here. And I just knew it. I wasn't doing anything about it, but it's like I just know it. And I've always been reserved in that area of life. And then my friend was like, hey, do you want to do this with me? And I'll coach you through these sessions. And I was like, yes, yesterday I'm in. She was a, she's a sex, love, and relationship coach. So I was like, yup, sign me up. I need it. Just everything. And it was more so for me so that I could impact those areas of my life. And then Crete happened. Cause I didn't know it was going to happen when I said yes to her. And I was like, Oh, I'm going on this trip. I have to, what well, can we start afterwards? And she's like, yeah, absolutely. And I was like, Whoa, this is wild. And then we started after this, like the solstice in Scorpio Taurus access. And I was like, Oh my God, perfect timing. And then everything that happened to me on this retreat, I was like, Oh my God, female love and kindness and support. Like what even is this? And as you know, my theme was like breaking out of my hard shell or like, I didn't need to have my walls up. Like my little soft interior could just be, and I could just be myself. And there was no competition. There's no this and that. And I really felt for the first time in my life, I could just be authentically me and like not hold back any of the fire, any of the bigness, any of the loudness, any of it. And I just like, I was renewed in those moments. And um, so that's when it started and it's been going on since then. And I have, I think this is my last month of it happening, but then I get to continue in my own way. And I feel more so than ever, like I want to talk more about it. Like it needs to be talked about every single day with every single woman just to have a more intimate connection with themselves. So like what has been great for me is just like, self-pleasure, learning what I like, learning to speak what I like, learning how I want to, like how I don't have to be logical in those moments. I don't have to have an expectation for what comes out of whatever's happening intimately, whether it's with just myself or with a partner. And that's such a big part, not expecting, not being logical, not trying to calculate what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. And when you genuinely let go and when you genuinely release and you are safe and you're like, yep, yeah, I am that goddess. I am this energy. Bow down at my feet. Do what you'd like. Do this because I said so. Do that because you said so. Like really having that dynamic, which is really funny to speak out loud. But yeah, my my throat chakra has really been cranked open it's like there's a accordion and it's stuck on the big open part so it's like okay you just have to talk all the time now <laughs> I'm gonna say it <laughs> whether you like it or not <laughs> yes it's just gonna come out right here 
And so that's been a little bit of my practice. So thank you for asking. Oh, yeah. Awesome. And I love that. I love that you can, well, I love that we're entering into a more open world and that it's becoming safer and safer to talk and to explore this aspect of ourselves and to be like, you know what? Yes. Like I love to do this. I love to do this with myself or with my partner. And I love to explore my sexuality and there's nothing shameful about that. There's nothing shameful about like being naked in front of a mirror or there's nothing shameful about exploring myself that's just one of the aspects and I don't know have you explore, explored um shibari that's mm -hmm. such a great practice for like surrendering like with rope I, I um follow this person and she does that connection with stillness and, and her partner and it's such a great way to kind of like surrender if you're being tied up and it's mm -hmm. not it doesn't have to be like painful it's just like that holding and it's like wow like I can't move and the pleasure that might come from mm -hmm. simply not moving and just being in stillness and trusting your partner if you're doing it with your partner or if you're doing it with yourself like just trusting your ability to do the knots and feel your body as you do the knots or, or like the rope around you like how does it feel so it's a great way to connect with your body and to tune in with that so Wow. <laughs> wow what's that called shibari shibari okay shibari. that's interesting i-b-a-r-i shibari i think that's a, the name of the practice and you can do like many different uh rope styles and many different practices people hang themselves like it's just wild <laughs> but like like it doesn't have to be hardcore like you can start right with the rope and just put it around you and just like mm. how does it feel to have your arm tied up and not being able to move does it feel good or if it doesn't feel good why does it feel good so such a powerful practice as well I think that's really important like just how often I think with everything we've been saying there's always been the question of how does this make me feel or do I like it if not why not and there's always that double-ended stick. You're going to always have both ends. So why not explore both ends instead of neglecting to say, hey, I acknowledge you part that's like scared of being tied up. Like why? Let's, let's, let's see. And I think, would you say that would be a way that people can start to enter their own, own transformations on a very basic level? yes yeah and your personal truth as well right just like it's in the simple things like why do I like to do this and not that mm -hmm. or like you don't have to go and dive deep into like the why am I and like going back no like why do I prefer this over that or like why do I want to do it this way rather than this other one why does this emotion comes up when I'm talking about this it's in the little tiny things throughout our day that we get to explore more who we are mm -hmm. and the more we do that those little tiny observations then it becomes like a snowball and then eventually just know so much about yourself and just like you know with astrology is such a great tool right and it offers validation for just who we are and just the way we are and it's like oh my god that makes so much sense and it's okay that's who we are sometimes there's contradicting aspects within ourselves mm -hmm. and that's fine it's just who we are and so yeah just exploring who we are finding personal truth which in my opinion eventually just leads you to so many good places and otherwise you just become a little bit bitter with life right life life doesn't feel as delicious when you are not in your truth it feels like you're forcing like you're pushing like mm -hmm. it doesn't feel authentic and so when we're honest with ourselves with what we want what we desire which there's an infinite amount of possibilities then you get to pick and choose and explore there's no right way of living it's just different ways in which we can live and then how do we find collaboration with that really like how do we find that alignment with others because well what if my truth is crossing yours then that's something that we'd have to discuss and then find a middle ground and so that's a little bit more tricky but that's yeah. the fun yes wow Oh, when you're bringing this into, when you have two people and the whole like crossing truths with one another, 
I feel like that's when it gets sticky. That's like the boundary aspect of it, right? It's like, all right, what's your boundary? What's my boundary? Is this really our boundaries? Where Where's the safe spot? Or why is this yours? Why is this mine? And then like knowing when to respect it and when we're, when to respect it, but then when to push it and not push it in like a, what how we've been referring to push as, which is like doing things that are sticky and yucky and not good. But like, when is it time to like break that mold, I guess. And I think that's kind of what I mean when I go back to like my own little situation I had to deal with and I was awakened to consciously with the the partner and then the the codependent cycle it was like oh yeah these truths aren't mashing and because I'm not being totally true I'm giving in to make this your truth but I feel really bad and in the end we're both gonna get hurt that person will probably get hurt worse because they're all in with their truth but you're not and so it's like oh it's a little sticky like that so (laughs) that's And you know what? The other day I was talking with a friend and we were talking about that. And then normally when it's two people, then if, right, like sometimes the best thing is to say like, okay, bye. Mm -hmm. Like it's fine. It's better to part ways. But what about, and I had this question and it's something that it really changed my perspective. What about when it comes to countries, for example, Mm -hmm. when the truth of a country is not the truth of the other country and how do you, like, you can't say bye, right? Like you can't say bye. We're not talking anymore you can't and so how do you like go about collaborating and I feel like that's kind of like where we are in the world how do we find collaboration and understanding on the biggest picture and I think that's just another level and it can't be fully comprehend by a person but just something to consider like sometimes we're really quickly on saying like bye like this is not working out but then how do you find that bigger picture like let's collaborate in that sense and Mm -hmm. so I think that's that's something interesting to ponder on and maybe sometimes we're not like we just how can we surrender and 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 be selfless in that sense and be like you know what like maybe it's okay maybe I can give up this maybe I can give up that and not not from like I want to please you but more so in the you know what I want peace and I and if this is what means to be at peace well it's fine but where are our priorities sometimes we don't want peace sometimes we want war we want destruction and so that's the balance behind what do you think what do you think about that analogy like the the bigger picture that is really interesting and so so complex in such a different way but not because then when you say like you brought in, yeah, like we want peace. We can do this and that to achieve that. But war, like sometimes war is what people want. And then that just ties back into the self of like, no matter what, sometimes you just can't have peace with yourself. You have to start a war in order to see what is being battled against. And like, where's that middle ground? Or like, what's going to become fresh and new from that experience? I mean, there's going to be some bloodshed that's a given but then after the bloodshed like what's going to be fertilized and grow from this or how is it going to impact you or how can you grow from this point forward so that's what that conjured up in my head (laughs) wow that's so good though like that was a great pov for sure like we don't realize how necessary it is in a way for us to achieve a bigger picture and like all the all the things that come out of it in a way like sometimes we it's like oh my god this is so bad but like how is it serving on the larger picture and also how can we learn from it so that it happens less and less in the future and if if that's what what we desire but again it just comes to what do we want and what collectively do we want to create as well I feel like that's so important we don't realize the power that everyone has and that's something that Sometimes I, you forget, right? Like you forget that you're in the collective. You just believe that you're just living your life, but you don't realize how we impact each other so hard. And the state we're in and where we're creating, whether if it's consciously or subconsciously, is being in, reflected in the larger picture. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like sometimes it's a responsibility as well. You know, a responsibility to be conscious and to stand for what you truly believe in. 
I hear people complaining. It's like, oh, this shouldn't be this way. This shouldn't be this way. But then are you embodying that essence? Are you embodying that love that you want to see out there? And that's, that's the call. <laughs> Mic drop, Liz. That's exactly it. Are you fucking embodying what you're complaining about? And not even just complaining, but speaking like body, mind, soul alignment. Do I embody that? Am I speaking about that? Like, oh, the layer of projections where it's like, I don't like that bossy woman, but then you're the bossy woman. And it's just like the the mirror just keeps rippling. It is just insane to, to contemplate those scenarios, but also like, hey, wait, uh, good wake up jingle. Like, hey, you did that why <laughs> what what for what are you trying to express or acknowledge or what are you craving and how are you answering that call or how are you neglecting that call like you can't just keep letting it go to voicemail not just doesn't just go away <laughs> yes, sir. exactly like hearing the call and buying the call listening and just tapping in really tapping in and, and, and embodying and being and at the end of just a playing around that's all sometimes I like well I sometimes take things really seriously and it's like no like this is how it should be and then it's like you know what we're here we're learning we're exploring like it's fine uh not to put a lot of pressure on us but also acknowledging it's just I, I think that truth sometimes is very both sides you know like can you see the multiple sides in one perspective the contradictions and hold that like hold the larger picture within ourselves and within the larger the, the collective and yeah very very complex for sure mm -hmm. but also they it's that, that's the joy of figuring it out and like going about it and sharing it and, and talking that's that's the fun literally I don't know if you listen to Abraham Hicks or not I love her and one of her stories is her and her hub they go to Colorado they go on a raft trip well they didn't decide to go on a raft trip for them to look at the water at the start and go oh this isn't what I wanted to get back on the bus and have the bus driver drop them off at the end point of the river and then for them to get out and go wow we did it that is boring and that is controlled that is forced that is the push Whereas if you just go and you have the experience and you let go of what you think it has to be or how it should be, even if it's as repetitive of how you drink your coffee or how you go to bed or how you respond to someone who contradicts you or has a different truth than you or what you decide to put on your sandwich at lunch, like you can do it in so many different ways. And we get into the behavioral patterns that we pick up because as mammals, we want it to be as easy as possible to save energy because our bodies are always trying to save energy. Even when we're like slouching and we're not sitting up in a good posture, it's like the body's just trying to save energy, but you're really just hurting your back and eventually it's going to kill you. So you want to sit nice and tall. <laughs> but that's the idea is that, wow, I lost my train of thought, but we get to have the choice at all times. And we just get to have the choice. <laughs> exactly. What are we going to choose? Right? Like, how, how do we choose? And that's, that's what I was mentioning about the infinite intelligence. No matter what you choose, that's the right, the right choice. Yeah, because there's no right or wrong. Yeah, and sometimes we get so trapped, though. Like, sometimes I personally, it's like, oh, my God, like, is this the right choice? Yeah. right like am I doing the right thing and then I have to come back and tell myself you know what this is perfect and this is this is how it's supposed to be and I get to pick as well and honestly that's something that I'm personally still learning like I get to pick I feel like there has to be the way right like mm -hmm. the way for highest alignment and and there's no room for the messy and for the not so pleasurable but at the end it's those lessons right like it's through the pain through the messy that we get to learn and experience and achieve higher levels of consciousness deeper understanding and overall just just living right like that's what that's what life is about you get mistakes and then you learn about them and then you make some more and then you learn about them and then that's the fun of it it's it's, it's a process 
but getting trapped on them sometimes is is a trap <laughs> yes yes that is the trap that is the booby trap it's like you're walking and you're practicing and then you just fall into the pit and you're like I'm stuck here <laughs> and you can't climb out that's a really great way that you put it I also want to ask you give us a little bit of insight as to like how you even got to be this kind of human in this essence who has these different multifaceted sides of thought I mean how you articulate and how you I mean I've always seen you like since we first met in the elemental mysteries it's like you always had a way with articulating and perceiving the world around us so I want to have you share more about like where you grew up what your your lineage is like and how that may be working with you now or how you might be tapping into that now Ooh, okay very interesting question okay so I was born in Mexico City and that's where I grew up until I was 19 and I have journals since 2016 so mm -hmm. I'm 23 now so I've been journaling for a long time since I was 16 and so I remember I would always do like poems about the universe and I would always look at the sky and be like wow like I feel there's something I feel like it's so big but I exist and this is not something that nobody taught me but well well I, my, my parents um a golf there in a second but I just felt this connection with the universe uh, as long as I remember and so I was raised my parents were my mom was more like Catholic, but she was Catholic open, Catholic spiritual. So she's like, all religions are, are very similar. There's, mm -hmm. um, I can feel the connection with God through uh, Catholic, Catholic system. But I, I believe I'm open. I'm open to past lives. And my dad, when I was born, he got really into like, a dense spirituality and like I've shared he um, became a shaman throughout his journey and so we would do meditations at night when I was little and, and he was like okay I had a dolphin like a dolphin plush toy and that was like my spirit animal all the time and then we do guided meditations and I would just, like I, I would imagine and visualize the dolphin taking me to adventures and so I grew up very open and aware to the spiritual world to the unseen to what we can't see but feel mm -hmm. and and well throughout my life my dad would always tell me like Liz um whatever you do just really think about the the collective uh think about the larger picture and it's very important that you always listen to your internal god and then at that time I was like dad what is my internal god like I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> right but then as I grew up I was like that's very interesting and I just felt really called to philosophy right like in, in philosophy like mm, like what is this do, you, do I believe in a soul what a soul is and I remember I would ask my teacher a philosophy like hey like do you believe in God and then he said like, no and then I would be dissatisfied with that answer I'd be like why not <laughs> Right. And so then I, I felt a strong call to be in Canada mm -hmm. and moved to Canada. And I moved along when I was 19 to pursue um, aerospace engineering because I wanted to study the universe. And I thought that the physical universe, it was related with that, which I think it's really funny because it has nothing to do with the, the universe. But <laughs> I just I think it's really funny. And then. Yeah, I just started hearing more of the call. I was into personal development, but then in Canada is where I was really just being forced to be alone in a way, right? And and just starting questioning things like when I do grocery shopping, like grocery shopping, what is the right thing to, to shop for? How should I believe? How should I behave? Who is Liz? And so I had that crisis moving away that really took me there. And then I just think, in general, you, you can just feel your spiritual nature, the depth, the call. And I think my lineage, my mom would always tell me like, hey, let's just do whatever makes you happy. And so that that has been like a blessing in my life because it's like, I don't care. My mom would be like, I don't care if you go and paint nails for a living. Like if that's what you love, then you don't, you, 
you do you girl and so it has been this looking for what turns me on in life which I think it's so important right like what turns you on in life what makes you feel excited that's where it is and mm -hmm. so it has been a journey of what turns me on and then I realized that it was spirituality and not like when I say spirituality it's just this finding who you are and exploring the universe like what's the universe is about and I feel something inside of me that it's telling me that I have a higher calling what is that mm -hmm. and just opening my mind to like psychic gifts and, and meditations and just I, I just find so interesting the unknown world what we can't see and I I'm extremely passionate about it as you can tell and I just realized that I, I, I just want to help the collective. I just want to help people in their beingness. I think that's just such a foundational, like there's people that feel really passionate about how things work. And mm -hmm. I feel like it's just about how do we work? Who do we are? Like, who do you are? That's such a fundamental question. And so it's my purpose at this time to figure out who I am and help others figure out who they are mm -hmm. and who we are and the collective and so that's kind of like a little bit about my story and what brought me here how about you as all tell me about you <laughs> i love if you share that have you shared this before i don't think so um yeah i don't think so i feel like it's it's constantly changing which is really irritating to me but <laughs> because i my analytical and logical mind wants an answer right it wants to know what the, the ultimate purpose is and I in a dream received a really beautiful vision of having a, facil a facility that was ginormous and it would be a place where body mind soul alignment could be introduced into a community and could be a safe space for a community to come and commune in. And it would have all of your gym necessities, movement from everything you can think of. And then there, it would be on a large plot of land. So there would be a lot of wood. So if you wanted to run outside, you could. If you wanted to bike inside, you could. Whatever your fancy. And then there'd be like a little nutrition area. And there'd be people who can help you. Oh, this is what these foods do and why you want to do this or like this is your type of eating personality this would serve you the best or this is what you need because we're all so so different and that's another big thing about the health community that irks me that you, they try to just push on one one dogma and it's just not true because you just have to know you. And I think that's the biggest part. You just come back to you. But then there'd be education places. Like your kids could come. And they would learn about survival skills. Or how to do their taxes. Or avalanche control. Like whatever the thing would be. There'd be some sort of curriculum. And then there'd be a space for adults to come. And, and have deep conversations. And talk. And listen to elders. And then just a whole bunch of whatnot going on and then in the back and like the wooded area I would really love to have a space for people to learn about plant medicine and plant medicine ceremonies and so that's more of like the practical side of like this big vision I have to like one day have this place anyone and everyone can come you're welcome and you can explore all these things and you can heal and you can be loved and supported and like the garden and the walking and the outdoors and just doing life differently but I think at like the basis of my soul it's to genuinely connect with other people and hear about their life while also like understanding what we're all building together and that's maybe the simplest way I can put it <laughs> oh yeah I love that. That's a great idea. I've also, one of my big ambitions is kind of like do it like a school or something, something like that. We need, we need that space in the real world, like the online world. Yeah, that's great. We're learning about free information in the digital world. But I think the most, 
amazing way to live is on the real world, right? Like in nature, in person, we're built to that. And we're getting away from it in, in some aspects, like we're kind of connecting more with others, but that's a great, a very holistic perspective. And mm-hmm. I can certainly sense there's a reason why we met. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's something that I love. It's like everyone you know, like there's a reason everything that is on your experience there's like a, a high level of degree of intelligence behind that we are utterly unaware and that's okay that's fine that's who we are but just acknowledging the little symbol lessons like the symbolisms behind everything that we experience that's just crazy to me mm-hmm. and just everything that we experience everyone we know I love that you share you know like your purpose getting to know and and again it's like what are we building together sometimes that's I, I think that's just the path or like you you start and you feel isolated and then you you realize who you are and then you want not to just do it by yourself but like how are we co-creating all together what are we doing together how are we harmonizing together rather than being alone and feeling like the world is terrible right like I've heard people say like oh my god the world's so bad and it's like no bro like the world's beautiful there's so much people out there really trying their best to create that world and we're all slowly awakening Mm -hmm. to that and awakening to to realize that that we we want that and it's mind-blowing it's 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 happening the big awakening the great awakening just coming together it's happening it's keep holding the vision if the collective desires and want to build it consciously it will happen it will there's no doubt it will happen yeah i i love this and i i love our conversations i love knowing you It, it really feels like the missing puzzle pieces that you almost didn't know you were missing, but you felt an absence in some way. Like when you meet the certain people, it's like, boop, the piece goes into place. You're like, (gasps) (laughs) and then you freak out a little bit. And that's, I mean, it's just like another example I keep referring to during our conversation. Paulina having her vision and then having an audience and like, yes, technology, like I'm so with you, like, we need the balance of in-person workshops as well as in-person communal ceremonies and maybe cultivating that online to get more people in on the fun but like her doing that and then us all meeting you tall that that we mentioned earlier she was on the podcast last week and and uh and just then meeting in person and that being this like huge orgasmic moment in life like holy moly we're here we're alive and then the magic that happens when you meet in person with people who hold a similar vision who hold a similar longing and knowing in their heart like I'm not sure if you felt this growing up but did you just feel like you knew how you knew this greater or more simple way of of life to be uh like in can you explain a little bit further your question yeah like did you have experiences growing up where I don't know if this makes sense but if you like you knew the answer like you knew if you you acted in this way like it would be like the high road, so to say, but instead you are like, I don't really know. So you act the other way and then it's like the low road, so to say. And then you're like, oh my God, this is actually a horrible outcome. I should have listened to the first thing. Like, did you ever have that growing up? <laughs> Ooh, that's a great question. I think so. Yeah, for sure. Like just, just ways of being that were like, what are you doing? Like what's happening, Lisa? Right. And it's and it's all those ways in which we learn. Mm-hmm. Since we're very young, those er- errors in the way that our lessons that take us. But that's what I was saying. I feel like there's, in a way, there's no, there's no, I mean, you'll feel, you'll feel the pain. You'll feel the pain if it's not aligned, if it's not serving you. Mm-hmm. Like you can tell by the level of pain, sadness, and just in general, like um, 
how would you say just I guess pain that yeah. you're experiencing it. But but that that pain is what guides you and what serves you on the larger picture. So no matter where you go, you just make it right. Mm -hmm. And that's 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 so beautiful. <laughs> Even in the lowest, darkest moments that's when we realize right like when we hit rock bottom I had a moment like that during COVID and I was like what am I doing with my life like I can't do this anymore mm -hmm. and it was a dark moment where I was like I'm not I don't want to do this anymore and that pain was what took me to a better place mm -hmm. and so maybe if I had an experience that I would I would have been more in like this regular path rather than this grandiose path and so it's always taking it taking us to a better place mm, I love that I love that you listened and you're on the grandiose path that's beautiful <laughs> today today has been so much fun and I'm so honored that we got to connect and I got to hear more about your workshop, which congratulations. That's amazing. I'm very proud of you. To, I have never done an in-person workshop outside of a yoga class. And so I, I admire you so much. That's such a beautiful offering. And I hope that you are going to be doing more. But before we tune out of today's little conversation, I have some questions I want to ask that I like to end the conversation with to just for fun. And the first one is, what is your spirit animal and why? Okay. Um, I've always thought about my spirit animal <clears throat> as a dolphin. Mm -hmm. Ever since I was very little, I just felt that psychic connection with them. They would take me on adventures, literally like they would take me on adventures. Uh, and it's really funny. I have this story. I was on a meditation with my dad. And I, I remember it so vividly. It was like, there was three castles. There was like a castle and it was like a coral castle. There was like a metal castle and then another color castle. And then I was like, which one should I pick? And then the dolphin guided me toward like upwards. And then there was like a golden castle hidden behind. <laughs> and like, I was like five, man. Like I was so little. And now that I think of it, it's like, wow, like that's so profound. And I just think dolphins are just very intelligent, very psychically. They are very, they live in community and uh, they feel love. They, they're so intelligent in many psychic ways. And I just felt that strong connection. That's why. How about yours? How about your <laughs> Mine is the sea otter. <laughs> oh yeah, you have a tattoo, right? <laughs> yeah. Playing the saxophone. And why? Yeah. I yeah, I, I was curious if, if it was the same or if it had shifted, but I love that. And it's very fitting. And um just to tie in, like, oh, you see these three? Let me take the higher perspective, the bigger picture, and show you the golden castle. Like how cool. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so the second question is. What is your go-to practice? Become more present in the moment. My go-to practice is to detach from mm -hmm. the thoughts and the emotions. Like if I'm too trapped, it's almost like you kind of like step backwards in your mind. That's how I conceptualize it. And it's almost like you imagine like the awareness uh, having the thoughts, but then you're like the awareness of the awareness. Mm-hmm of the thoughts and the emotions and I feel like that centers me it's like okay I'm having the, all these thoughts but then I can come back of being the awareness of the awareness mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. how I, I come back beautiful three what is your guilty pleasure my guilty pleasure is chocolate <laughs> I love something I love chocolate and mm -hmm. Sometimes I try, right, to like be, okay, let's try to find the best chocolate that it's not like horrible for my health. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would say chocolate is just so good. <laughs> Yum, chocolate. And four, what is the vision you hold for the future of our collective? 
Ooh, that's such a lovely question. My vision for the collective is harmony with this harmony, like harmony in the disharmony. Like how can we find peace without peace? Like because we can hold it within. And understanding towards each other mm -hmm. although it might seem ex like real real hard and I don't want to put that limitation but finding deeper understanding and more holism more unity understanding that we're all part of the same planet mm -hmm. and how can we feel that wholeness within ourselves that then can be projected outwards Mm, yum mm -hmm. oh that's a big body tingle this whole <laughs> conversation has just been tingles the whole time I'm like yep yeah, this is just what we're gonna live in for the next hour and a half we're good we're good <laughs> I'm just gonna ride this high the rest of the night it'll it's beautiful <laughs> oh thank you so much it lifted me this conversation so much like it really lifted me up so much contagious that. contagious uh well liz uh please share where everyone can find you and if you have anything coming up on the books uh okay yeah my instagram i guess it's uh liz l-i-z-z-m-o-i-l-e-s-x -S. that's my instagram and that's where i post most of my stuff and i I'm planning to do a digital course soon, but it's still in the works. Mm -hmm. So nothing concrete yet. Okay. So that's what, that's what's up. <laughs> Excellent. So everyone, Liz's IG will be in the show notes. So you can go click follow, be prepared for the digital course coming out. Be able to hear you. <laughs> and do you have any last words to send the listeners off with? Um, well, just sending you so much love and gratitude for listening to us mm -hmm. and just reminder of your greatness, reminder of your amazing, incredible beingness that is the medicine for this world. And thank you, Isabel, for providing the space and yeah, this sacred space for people to listen and to listen to amazing conversations mm -hmm. and different ways and perspectives and ways of being it's very lovely yeah thank you mm, well everyone thank you for listening so much love to you i invite you to be inspired to go out into your corner of the world and create a positive and enthusiastic ripple effect peace